Annie Hall to Manhattan and from Zelig to Blue Jasmine, Woody Allen has some 50 movies under his belt. The director is back with Rifkin's Festival, a film that tips its hat to some of the cinema greats from Bergman to Bunuel. It follows a neurotic writer who unravels during the San Sebastian Film Festival as his publicist wife assists a trendy young French director. Woody Allen spoke with us from his New York apartment. Since coming here, my mind started playing tricks on me. Now I'm beginning to question everything, what I want, who I am, who in the world am I? Hello, Woody Allen. Ripken's festival, although set in the present, affectionately spoofs the work of Fellini, Truffaut, Bergman, Bunuel, and Claude Lelouch. For our younger viewers, can you explain the impact of European art house films on you and in America in general in the 1960s? When I was a young man, there was the commercial American cinema, which we all loved and was delightful. As time passed, the U European cinema became uh, so interesting for us and so innovative and so fresh and inventive and exciting. Uh, innovations by Truffaut and, and Godard and Lelouch and René were just sensational. They created a, uh, a vocabulary and, a, and an art form, a landscape, that forever influenced cinema as an art. Hey, where have you been? Me? Where have I been? Well, I went out first, and well, then I, I stopped off at the doctor's office. Why, did someone give you a gift certificate? I had a, a little ringing in my ear. Huh. But it's all, it's all gone now. It's like 8 o'clock. My god, how long have you been there for? There was a line, and uh, I got fitted in at the end. You kind of smell like alcohol. Have you been drinking? Me? Yeah, you, you, you. What, what is going on with you? You're all like in a daze. At the press screening I attended of Rifkin's Festival, I had the great good luck to be seated behind French director Claude Lelouch, and it was so sweet to see his face in the dark, laughing, smiling. Every time there was a reference to his film, A Man and a Woman, I think there are three in Rifkin's Festival. Lelouch absolutely loves the new technology. He has shot a few films, actually, using just cell phones, whereas you work with the world's greatest cinematographers. Do you worry that what makes cinema special is getting diluted by the rise of streaming? The problem is that uh, two things have happened. One is that the, the studios have found that uh, they could make the most money, be the most profitable by making blockbuster films. The Tom Cruise film that's out was making like a billion dollars or something. You know, that's what they want. They want films that are commercially uh, exciting. So that's one thing that happened. And then the other thing happened was um, television became a, a different medium. It became, in your home, big. The screens got very big. They s started uh, having access to so many films, both old classics and modern films. Now, the, the influences are from films that they see, you know, on television a lot. And, uh, and you see all these, you know, Marvel films and, and science fiction films and big uh, productions. And that's what influences uh, young people. It's to be a fabulous bongo player. Isn't that exciting, Ward? Not since Neil Armstrong walked onto the moon. Louis Garrel is incredibly entertaining as the uh, French film director for whom Rifkin's wife is working as publicist. Garrel himself is French film royalty. He's playing a film director who's trying to be humble and modest, but still manages to come across as pretty pretentious. What did he bring to the role? He's a wonderful actor and uh, very attractive and uh, charming. He has to play a, a film director who's very successful and makes very 
good films, but is a little pretentious and uh, a little grandiose. And he played it perfectly. He played it realistically, but amusingly. You know, that's actually a great idea. I mean, can you imagine the, the, the coup, the press coup, if, if we had the premiere, the New York premiere at the UN? <laughs> it would be incredible, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we put in quite a day today, huh? You did. You were unbelievable. Can I have one vodka martini, please, sir? With a twist of lemon. Oh, right? you have good memory, huh? You know. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Your previous film, A Rainy Day in New York, got rave reviews in every French publication across the political spectrum, and that hardly ever happens, and it played for over a year here in France. But English language reviews of late uh, insist that you keep making the same movie and have nothing new to say. Do you think you keep making the same movie? I think I'm always making a different movie. I don't see any connection between uh, uh, a rainy day in New York and uh, Match Point or, or Zelig and uh, Rifkin's Festival. I see a great difference, but I've, I've used this comparison before. It's sort of like Chinese food. The Chinese cuisine has 200 different dishes, but it kind of all tastes like Chinese food. I think my films are, are all different all the time, but I can completely understand why to an audience, using the Chinese food analogy, uh, that uh, it's all Chinese food. From Jenna Rollins to Diane Wiest, uh, Judy Davis to Kate Blatchett, now Gina Gershon, you have probably written more rich, interesting roles for women of a certain age than any other screenwriter since the golden age of Hollywood. And yet the idea persists that your films are obsessed with young women. Can you explain this mischaracterization of your body of work? It's a strange thing if they saw a film like Match Point or something and they saw that film and someone said, well, he likes to write about murder. The fact that I've made 50 films and probably 40 of them, at least, of comedies not about murder, doesn't matter. It's whatever misconception gets floated out there. It doesn't bother me, but it's, it's not true. has become an accepted notion in the U.S. that 1979's hit movie Manhattan is about the shocking romance between a 17-year-old girl going on 18 and a 42-year-old man, and that it is somehow uh, in favor of large age gaps in relationships. Could you give us your take on Manhattan? What's the film about? Marshall Brickman and I, who wrote it, you know, we'd be sitting in a room trying to think of what would entertain people. And finally, we'd think, oh, oh this would be funny if uh, this guy's got a younger girlfriend and they, that gives us some jokes and, and this person's a pseudo-intellectual and that gives us some jokes. And, you know, and we write the film in all innocence about, uh, you know, and uh, we, we think about some incidents that happened in his life that would be funny, some incidents that happened in my life that would be funny, uh, that would show New York, we both loved the city. And we never gave a second thought to any aspect of the film other than uh, what would be romantic and what would uh, be funny. New York was his town, and it always would be. Woody Allen has come under fire in the U.S. in recent years after an allegation by his adopted daughter, Dylan Farrow, that he molested her when she was seven, resurfaced in the wake of the Me Too movement. An allegation Woody Allen has always denied, and no charges were ever formulated. But several U.S. actors have distanced themselves from the director. I keep reading in the U.S. press that uh, actors don't want to work with you anymore. If you only make a few more films, have you considered casting the actors who have said they are very eager to work with you, starting with Catherine Deneuve and uh, Isabelle Huppert? I never think of uh, making movies and casting anybody. If you have ever tried writing anything, plays or movies, 
you're in a room by yourself or with a collaborator sometimes, but mostly I'm by myself, and you're hard up for ideas. It's hard to get good ideas. Scripts are the hardest thing to do. You don't think of actors. You don't think of locations. You, do, you don't think of, is this serious? Is this funny? Is it, you think, what's a good idea? Uh, you think, oh, gee, I once went on a trip to uh, someplace and uh, there was a, a woman doctor and uh, she was very pretty and I thought about maybe pretending to be sick so I could go see her often. And I think, gee, that, that gives me a story. And that's the movie you write. So I never think of, of writing uh, for actors. But you are aware that Kathleen Deneuve and Isabelle Huppert, these two incredibly talented actresses, have openly expressed a desire to work with you. Well, every now and then uh, someone will tell me, some great actor or actress wants to work with me. Uh, you know, I've written um, over the years many, many good parts for women. When I started making movies, I could never write for women. I always wrote for men, mostly myself. And then I met uh, Diane Keaton, and uh, she was a very big influence on me. And I started writing for women more. And we wrote Annie Hall for her. And I started to, I don't know, to see things more from the female point of view and enjoy writing for women. And I would be honored, of course, to uh, if an idea occurred to me for Isabel Hubert or, or Catherine Deneuve, or, you know, I would be honored to have them in a film of mine. Thank you very much, Woody Allen. Well, thank you. I've had a chance to look at my life over the last few weeks, and I realize I've made a lot of bad decisions. So, do you have anything to say to me after everything that I've told you?